We've been extended another opportunity to come, and we have been missing one another because of the virus, and we have, since we haven't been together, we've been down courage. Folk have been telling us stuff that doesn't make sense to us, and you hear it all in the news. They say, now we all in the same boat. You heard that, Brother Kim? No, I'm going to show you about the boat, because I'm not in the same boat. They say, yes, you are. No, I'm not. I'm in the same storm. I'm in a different boat. When you look at John chapter 20, and this ain't even my lesson. <laughs> chapter 21, the Bible said in verse 1, after these things, Jesus showed himself again to the disciples at the Sea of Tiberias. Now that's the Sea of Galilee. And on, on his wise show him, he set, uh, showed he himself. There was together Simon Peter, see, because you got to watch who's on the boat with you. Simon Peter, Thomas called Didymus, Nate, Nate, uh, Nathaniel of Canaan in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two other disciples. And Simon made a, 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 a Peter rather, Simon Peter made a decision to go fishing. Now let me tell you, nothing wrong with fishing. We got a fisherman over here. Uh, Brother Peterson, the great fisherman. Someday he's going to take us fishing. But the Bible say, uh, Peter said, I, I, under them, I go fishing. And they say unto him, if you go, we're going with you. And they went forth and entered in the ship immediately. And that night they caught nothing. Been on the water all night. And the Bible said, and they caught nothing. Now here's, here, here's where it said, but when the morning was now come, Jesus stood on the shore. But the disciples knew not that it was Jesus. Isn't that funny? The disciples didn't even know who he was. Sometimes you in the boat. Wrong boat. Watch. And he said, and then Jesus said unto them, Children, he called them, have you not any meat? And they answered him, No. And he said unto them, cast the net on the right. You got to get on the right side of the ship. I heard somebody say, I didn't get up on the right side of the Well, you got to find out which is the right side. Because the Bible said, when Jesus spoke to them and told them to cast on the right, same water, different boat. Not in the same boat. Cast on the right side, it said, and you shall find. They cast therefore, and now they were not able to draw. They had so many fish that they weren't able to draw. I want to tell you that as we go through this time, when God gets finished, he's not finished yet. And you know what? He's not going to speed it up on my timetable. I'm not going to speed it up on yours. But it will be fixed. when it. So we're going to be in the storm. Just decide on what boat we're going to be in. We're going to be with the Lord. God is good. He's going to take care of us. He promised that he'll never leave us nor forsake us. We are, we are designated the sons of God. God is going to look out for it. doesn't mean that we're not going to have some struggles, some hardships. But because uh, we're in the hand. In the hands of God, he'll take care of us. Good to see you. Uh, we got, this is the thing, I think this is the largest crowd since the culprit uh, had hit us. And we're glad that you began to come back. You know, it's not so much that you got to be here to work. It's just that we just miss the fellowship. Being together, the singing. Uh, the singing uh, was good this morning. Motivating, uplifting, inspiring. All of those things are important. Appreciate Brother uh, Peterson uh, for reading the scripture for us this morning. And uh, we're just so glad that God 
has blessed Sweetwater. Now that we have taken on Brother Peterson, uh, somebody said, well, what, 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 uh, well we're we, we going to uh, let him do his share, and we all have a part to play in this. Uh, it's not a one, uh, Brother Peterson, not a hired gun, you know, like they did in the gun. Western day, you get a hired gunslinger to kill off all your enemies. We didn't hire him to do that. <laughs> Uh, but, but he's going to be working along with us. Let me just reiterate uh, here in uh, 2 Corinthians 4. And I'm going to tell you because uh, this is internet service. And I had just talked to these brethren. And I say, we may, when people are viewing us live stream, we know that they're in the comfort of their home or somewhere that there are a lot more distractions around. So when we were talking, I said, we can't do over 30 minutes on Wednesday night because folk doing something else. They probably got the pot on the stove, and they said, I'll give them 30 minutes. Uh, and once that 30 minutes is gone, they get their pot. They're not worried about it. So we, we, want to, we may have to do this in part, but th I think this is what is needed at this time. So if you don't mind, I want to uh, just read, uh, uh, modulate on the scripture, and then have a vigorous, or maybe not, it's a teaching period. But, but Paul, if anyone knew anything about trials, it was Paul. I, I, don't, I don't think that, I don't, uh, when we look at uh, his pedigree and Paul had experienced some of everything. And so in his writing to encourage the church, uh, in this text, Paul starts off saying, Therefore, seeing we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, Paul said, we faint not. And church, I think that's something that we need to look at. Uh, I think he said something there. He said, since we have received this ministry, uh, Christians accepted Jesus as our Savior. Paul said, since we have received this, he said, uh, and, 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 and mercy, he said, we faint not. This not a, in other words, this is not a hundred yard dash. This is a marathon. And so we, we, we have to be considered because then when he jumps, he says, for this cause, in verse 16, he says, for this cause, we faint not, but though our outward man perish, and God knows that's true. I, God knows that's true. Every one of us in here can, can attest to that. Amen. I, I can remember when I, I can, used to look in the mirror myself and didn't see as many as I have now. I used to go run up down steps. Uh, wouldn't even think about it. Now I got to take my time. And even when I get to the top or the bottom, I got to rest a minute. I'm blowing. So the outward man is perishing. He said, but the inward man is renewed day by day. He said, for, the, for our light afflictions, and I'm going to come back and deal with that, which is not but for a moment, work it for us as far more exceedingly an eternal weight of glory. He said, while we look not at the things which are seen, but the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not are eternal. Let me start by asking a question. And this doesn't demand an answer, but I want you to think about something. Did anyone here this morning come here hoping and praying and longing for someone to sing a song or to say a prayer or to preach something that would strip all of your hopes away? I don't think so. Did anyone here come today hoping that someone would knock the wind out of their sails? I don't think so. But I do know that we came here for something to solidify our conviction, to elevate our faith, 
and to give us hope to stand on. Bible says, Paul writes in 2 Corinthians chapter uh, 10 and verse 3, he said, though we walk in the flesh, he said, we do not war after the flesh. He said, for the weapons of our, uh, of our warfare are not carnal. He said, but it's mighty through God pulling down strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the Lord. In captivity, he says, so we came to be encouraged, to be uplifted, to be able to stand on the promises that, that God had given us. And so Paul writes, and particularly in verse 16, and this is an incredible statement. Paul said, for which cause? He said, we faint not. He said, that, that, this is an amazing statement. The word faint refers to we don't, we don't have a fallen heart. We don't give up. Uh, uh, so the phrase can read, can read, we don't lose heart. Paul said, we don't faint. We don't lose heart. Paul is telling us regardless of what comes uh, his way, he doesn't give up, he doesn't give in, and he doesn't give out. He just doesn't lose heart. And it's easy. Uh, all of us have experienced in this life to lose heart. It's easy to become discouraged. During this time we're going through now, and all of our friends are locked away, all of our family are locked away, we feel alone, many folk are not employed, their job, the employers haven't opened. You, you, and as a child of God, you can be discouraged. No sense me preaching and saying that Christians cannot be discouraged. We can be discouraged. But Paul gives us a remedy for this being discouraged. He says, for which cause we faint not. You see that in 16? For which cause? He said, though, here's the reason, though our outward man does perish, he said, but the inward man is renewed Day by day. In other words, the spirit, God, renovates it. And God renovates it every day to be able to handle the circumstances that we deal with on a daily basis. Circumstances change. They'll be this way today, and tomorrow they'll be a different way. So he's a, and so God renews this. He, he gives us a new strength. He helps us cultivate a spirit that's strong enough to deal with certain. But now this just doesn't come because you come. But it comes from us engaging in God's word. Our strength comes from that. That we're able to stand against the wiles of Satan. If anybody knew this, it was Paul. Let me read to you in Second uh, Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 8. Paul said, But we not have ye ignorant, brethren, for the troubles which came to us in Asia. Amen. Paul endured some things. He said that we would press out of measure above strength in so much that we despaired even around. Paul thought that what he was going through would even take he is one. And many of us are experiencing that same mentality today. And what happens when that happens, when that discouragement comes, is we allow Satan to enter our hearts and steal our joy. So we, 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 we need something to encourage us, something to uplift us. And, 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 and so we, 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 we're going to be confronted with issues in life, with circumstances. But standing on the word of God, and first of all, developing the word, reading it, being convicted, because that's where our strength comes from. We used to sing the song, my hopes are built on nothing less than Jesus Christ and his righteousness. We still got to depend on him today with all that's going on. And in spite of that, our struggles are familiar to him are familiar to what Paul's experiencing. So we don't have to lose heart. 
Although the outward man is perishing, it's being decomposed, it's going away, we, but God is able to save us. And so we need to take our time and deal with those issues that, so that we can trust in the Lord. And, and because our nature, our nature falls. Remember, we look for outside circumstances to encourage us to be happy and joyful. Let me tell you, if you're depending on outside circumstances to be joyful today, you, you're going to be waiting a while. Joy comes from within. Amen. Joy comes from knowing God, trusting Jesus, and knowing what the ultimate outcome is. Amen. Things may look bleak now. David could even say that. Things may look bleak now, but God is still in control. He's still in charge. He's still moving. David said, I've been young and now I'm old. He said, but I've yet seen the righteous forsaken or seed begging bread. David said, the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. And so if we we'll just keep trusting and keep depending, I want to tell you, there are some things that are evident or, that are going to happen that, that we don't have to understand everything. As long as we trust in the Lord, God knows what's going on. And we can stand. We don't have to lose heart because God is leading us. Uh, we, in, in Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verses 1 through 7, I'm not going to read all of that for you. Uh, if we live in the world, you know exactly what's talking about. These bodies are dying and they die a little bit every day. Each of us die a little bit every day what we face, what we're confronted with. But that spiritual man is renewed on a daily basis. And that's what takes care of. That's what God is, Paul is saying. I, I, I know this physical body is breaking down, he said, but that inward man, if I can keep his relationship strong with God. There have been people who are laying on their deathbed but had so much trust in God were, were happy to the day that the Lord called them. I'm saying that because well, we, we get so discouraged. Give up. Ready to throw our hand in. Walk away. Because we don't understand what's going on in this life. We don't have to understand. God knows. And let me tell you something. Not only does he know, but he cares. And he's ready to take care and bless us through all the sufferings that we encounter in this life. The Lord is ready to deal with those for us. If we would just trust him, if we would just stand on his promises, he's promised to be with us. He's promised to take care of us. Um, Ecclesiastics there, uh, he said that, that uh, every day these uh, blessings are renewed on a daily basis. In other words, God knows where we are. And you know what? He knows how much we can stand. Somebody said, the Lord ain't going to put no more you can stand. He didn't say that. But he's gonna put, he wouldn't put any more. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. What put on you, he'll make a way for escape. Whatever you're going through, he'll make a way for escape. That, but that's, that's Christians. That's our advantage. That's why I say we are in the storm, but we're not in the same boat. We, 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 we got a Savior that's dealing with this. Helping us through everything that we go through. And so all we have to do is try our very best to be faithful to the cause of Christ. You know what you committed to. You know what the church is about. And as and long as the Lord allows you to stay here, you're going to be dealing with circumstances and situations. But I want to encourage you this morning, church. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. And lean not on your own understanding. Amen. And the Bible said, in all your ways acknowledge him. Amen. And he will direct your path. Give that in to him. Uh, and stop, stop putting it all on yourself. Stop taking a load on yourself. You can't deal with this. You, you can't deal with this. This is more than you can bear. So, so stop trying to uh, be, be more than what you are. God, God is our, our refuge, our very present help. In the time of trouble. He's there for us. And if we would just take his word. Believe in it. Stand on it. 
trust in him, grow, that gives us strength to be able to meet our consequences and meet our troubles head on. It's no difference. The Lord will always be there for us. The providence of God, he knows what we're, he knows. He already knows. Like those fishermen I just showed you, he already knew that the fish was on the right side of the boat. Wasn't no magic. God already knew what was going on. God already knows how this situation, this circumstance that we're going through this morning, he already knows how it's going to end. He already knows how it's going to end. I don't know how it's going to end, but God does. And, and that's, that's the great thing of it. He knows what's, what the ends are going to be. Uh, and those facts that are provided to him. There are always facts about God's providence. And we're standing on those facts. You know what? We're free mortal men. We can do as we want. Many folk think that they can, oh, I know how to do this. I'll run. Let me tell you something. God has fixed this situation this time where there's nowhere to run and nowhere to hide. Amen. We're all in this storm together. Just in different boats. And so, with that in mind, this morning, if you're viewing and you know that you need a Savior, that's what we need to consider. Jesus Christ came that we might have life and have it more abundantly. There's always been questions about his ability. In Matthew chapter 16, the Bible said, when he came upon the coast of Caesarea Philippi, men, asked, or he asked men, who do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? They had all kind of answers. They have them today. The same answers today. Yes. Same answers. They, 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 they said he's John the Baptist. Elias. Jeremiah are just one of the prophets. We don't know. And we really don't care. But then when he asked Peter. He said who do you say that I am? Peter said thou art the Christ. The son of the living God. Jesus responded and said. Blessed art thou Simon for John. Flesh and blood has not revealed this unto thee. But my father which is in heaven. And upon this rock, and he wasn't talking about the rock, Peter Petros is a rock small. He was talking about the confession that Peter made. He said, I will build my church and the gates of hell. Listen, listen at this. The gates of hell. They've been shaking ever since he built it. The gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Ever since he built it, Satan been trying to break in. Yes, the gates of hell shall not. I want to tell you this morning that you can become a member of that body. No, no, no. Some folks say, well, uh, let me tell you. Let, let me tell you for what the Bible says. This is not what coffee says. This is not what the Sweetwater Church of Christ says. This is what God's word says. If you hear God's word, Hear it and believe it. Two different things. If you hear it and believe it. Now belief is faith in action. That's what belief is. If I say, Brother Crosby, Elder Crosby, you better move. That light's going to fall on you. And you look up at the light and say, oh, yeah, I believe. Okay. Well, you didn't believe me. But if you believe me, faith in action calls you to move. So you hear God's word and you believe it. You believe it. And then after you hear God's word and believe it, then you've got to do something with yourself. You've got to get yourself ready to be able to receive it. Part of the problem with our society and with members, weak members in the church, is you've got to make preparations to be able to. You, you, you ever put, you know what, you, you could go to the uh, uh, go to the, uh, uh, the agricultural store, get seed. God tell you, show you on the package, you plant these, you can grow greens or peppers or potatoes. And you just come here and lay them out on that concrete out there. You're not going to get that. you you got to prepare your soil. Our hearts have to, not this heart, has to be prepared to receive God's word. That's called repentance. You've got to make things right 
You've got to be sorry for the wrong that you've done. You've got to humble yourself now. That's preparation, making preparation so that you can receive. And the key to the whole thing is going to be not only receive, but to obey. In the Old Testament, the words were spoken. And he said, to obey is better than sacrifice. We got a lot of folk today wanting to sacrifice. I, I, no, no, no. You start in Rome. Obey first. Hear the word, obey it. And then you must make the mouth confession. You know what the mouth confession does? It shows how much courage you got. And in this day and time, I want to tell you, it takes courage. When everybody else, everything else is coming loose, everything that's not nailed down is flapping in the wind, you got to stand for sure. That's courage. What we say is, I believe that Jesus is God's son. I believe that. I don't care if everybody else stops believing. I don't care if my best friends don't believe it. They will no longer be my best, best friends if they've given me a litmus test on what I believe. I believe Jesus died for my sin. I believe that God dispatched his son here to establish a place for us to be saved. Come on, tell it now. I believe that. That whole system we're talking about on Wednesday night in our Bible study, that whole system of salvation God had in his mind before the foundation of the world. He needed a perfect blood to save wretch yes. like me. Yes, Come on. Under the law, there was the blood of the bull and goats. Uh, bull and goats. And they only rode sin forward mm -hmm. for a year. Can you imagine that? But now, his son shedded his innocent blood to establish a kingdom that men could be saved. Yes. And I'm well aware, I'm well aware that there are those who are saying the kingdom hasn't come yet, Brother Coffey. The kingdom's here. First of all, in Matthew chapter 16, verse 28, Jesus himself said, there'd be some of you standing here talking to those men that were there. He said, you shall not see death till you see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. And then Paul in Colossians chapter 1, verse 3, Paul said, he said that we have been translated out of darkness into the kingdom of his dear Son. So you can't be translated into it if it wasn't here. It's here. The problem is we don't want to recognize that God has done his part. And that's why as a Christian, let me, let me, let me just be real with you. As a Christian, you, you, you don't have to worry about all of this. There's nothing, folk going around wearing and uh, there's nothing you could do about the situation that we're going through right now. You see that? Politicians can't change it. Folk with all the money, Bill Gates, the richest man, he can't change it. When God gets ready to change it, he'll change it. And you know what? He don't need your permission. He don't need to ask you, do you think it's time for me to change? When he gets ready to fix things. And if you go back and read the history of God's people, God has always had to take something of this magnitude to get his own people to be true to him. Go back and look at Habakkuk. Go back and look at Israel. Go back and look at when they were in captivity. They cried out to the Lord. The Lord said, I heard their calls. I heard your calls. We're crying today. But if there's going to be an impact, the church will do it. And the final step, becoming a child of God this morning, is baptism. I know there's a lot of folks say, well, listen, I believe and I trust. Well, to complete your obedience, you've got to obey. Yes, sir. Oh, baptism.
2 Timothy 2.10, Paul writes this. Paul said, therefore I undo all things for the elect's sake. Why, Paul? That they might obtain the salvation which is in Christ. Tells exactly where it is. And guess what? If you want to be saved, you need to be in Christ. Can't pray your way in. There's none of this magical, you're baptized into Christ. Salvation is in Christ. And when you rise to walk in a new life, let me tell you, there's still going to be struggles. I've, I've been in here two or three days and I still got struggles. Go have them. Never promised us a bed of roses. What he did promise, that you be faithful unto death. I'll give you a crown that fade not away. That's right. Now that's the promise he made. Right. Never promised that the thing was going to be easy. Right. You're not going to have no, no, you won't have any troubles. Satan won't be snip, sniping at your heels. Right. Everything is going to be, he never promised that. Right. But what he did promise, that if you be faithful unto death, I'll give you a crown that fade not away. He did promise that as long as you live on the top side of this soil, I'll be with you. He said, I'll never leave you, nor forsake you. There'll be times when you think you're all alone, but I'll be there. That's my promise to you. And in the final consummation, I'll save you. That's your desire. And we pray that it is. If you can see uh, as we uh, contact us on Facebook, uh, we'd, we'd love to talk with you. Uh, we'd, we'd love to talk with you and, and, and be, uh, be a servant for you. If, if you can see our phone numbers there, uh, we, call us. We, we want to get together with you. Uh, we want to help you. Uh, I, I know that the government gave you a little money on a stimulus to help you with, through this covert. We want to help you with this stimulus. This stimulus is from Jesus. So if you, if you would decide to come... And let us teach and uh, teach you the word of God. Share it with you. Give you something to build your hopes, your confidence. Not only through this period, but when things look good, we still need Jesus. We need him every hour. Yes. Take advantage of this this morning, if you would. Uh, come, come, and we'd love to meet you. We'd love to meet you, greet you. We'd love to assist you in any way that we possibly can. We do want you to know that we do love you and appreciate you. God bless you. We look forward to seeing you on our next.